in whatever we have done be it the measurement of a value or the measurement of a proportion we are basically obtaining a mean and a an error bar around it. So, a mean and an error bar. So, representation of the data will be in this form the mean and the error bar, but in this kind of representation uh, one does not get a feel for the spread of the data. How big was the spread, uh, what was the minimum value, what was the maximum value. So, all these informations are masked in this kind of a representation and there are certain applications in which that information becomes important. So, uh, in those cases another type of data representation is used which is called the box and whisker plot, box and whisker plot. In a box and whisker plot there is a box and there is a whisker, there are whiskers. Uh, for example, you can have this as the box and this are the whiskers. So, this is the box and this is the whiskers. Now, how do we represent a data set like this? A data set will be a number of numbers. Now, whenever such a number of numbers are obtained or available, we first represent that in a ascending order. So, that the minimum value is easily identified and the minimum value is plotted here. And the maximum value is plotted here. So, these are easy to identify. Uh, while I work, let me also give an example, so that we can uh, work with that example. Suppose, I have a data set, uh, which is in, in whatever unit you may put 17.2 is a data, 15.9, 16.7, 18.3, fifteen point three, ten point one, nineteen point one, and eighteen point two. So, how many data points are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen data points. And with that, we are trying to construct this kind of a box and whisker plot. The first step will be to arrange in order. So, arrange. So, if you arrange in an ascending order, I can see that that 10.1 is the minimum. So, 10.1, 15.0, 16.7, 18.3, 16.7, 18.3. Sixteen point three, sixteen point seven, 
seventeen point two, seventeen point nine, eighteen point two, eighteen point three, nineteen point one, and uh, nineteen point three and twenty point two. That is order. Ascending order, which immediately identifies the minimum. So this is uh, I'll now delete and put then the actual names, actual values. So the minimum is ten point one, and the maximum is twenty point. Clear. Now, in between the minimum and the maximum, there would be a particular value which is the median value between not the mean, the median value. The median value is the middle value of the data set. Now, there are 13 data points, therefore, the middle value is the, the seventh data point, right. Which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 17.2. So, 17.2 is the median value. Now, between the minimum and the median, between the minimum, minimum and the median, there would be the half the data points and the median of that which means the median of the values from here to here because 17.2 is the median. Now, there are 6 data points here, 6 is an even number. So, in order to find the median of that, we have to take the average of these two values 15.3 and 15.9 whose mid whose uh, uh, mid value is 15.6. So, this point would be 15.6 okay. and the rest which means that these 6 from here to here these 6 data points their median is the medium the mid value of these two. So, the mean of these two this comes to be 18.7. So, this point is 18.7. So, the box is actually uh, from the median of the the okay, let me put it this way. They, they actually carry num names. Uh, so, here we have uh, a position which is called the mean this, this point is called the q 1 and uh, it is this this point is called the median of the whole data set is called the q 2 and this is called q 3. So, this is a quartile, this is a quartile, this is a quartile and this is a quartile and it is immediately clear that one fourth of the data set, data set is in each of these quartiles. And by looking at it, you can easily figure out what is the spread of the data. Now, uh, therefore, it is easy to plot the box and whisker plot, it is basically the problem of finding the median values. Okay. And this range is called the interquartile range. Now, it is easy, easy to plot such uh, box and whisker plots. 
but uh, one major applications of the box and whisker plots is sometimes in an experiment we get outliers some value which is not normal which is beyond an acceptable range but what do you do then the accepted practice is that we always present that outlier in the data representation but we identify that as an outlier how do we identify that the standard procedure is that the the minimum range let me draw a line here here we will draw it here the mean is of the acceptable range is q1 is the minimum of the box minus 1.5 times the interquartile range interquartile range is the distance between q1 and q3 for example in this particular problem it is q1 15.6 minus 1.5 times interquartile range is 18.7 18.7 minus 15.6 and this uh, turns out to be uh, the interquartile range is 3.1 so this turns out to be 10.95 10.95 now notice that 10.95 is above 10.1 so, if the minimum of the acceptable range ends at 10.95, then 10.1 is an outlier. So, 10.95 is somewhere here. So, this is then identified as an outlier. Similarly, the max of the interquartile range of the acceptable range, max of the acceptable range. is the topmost point of the box is q3 q3 plus 1.5 times interquartile range and in this particular problem it is the 18.3 18.7 that point plus 1.5 times interquartile range was uh, 3.1 uh, that comes out to be 23.35 and you can see that the largest point in the data set is below that 20.2 therefore therefore we conclude that in this this whisker is okay but this whisker is not this whisker needs to be modified identifying the the outlier as well as by uh, plotting the whisker properly. So, let me delete it and let me correct, correct it. Uh, here we will plot a point and identify that as an outlier, but the extremity of the whisker the extremity of the whisker will be the last point within the minimum that means there is a range from the minimum to the maximum and within that the extremities of the points will be the extremity of the whisker so the whisker should end at this value which is above this so it will end at 15.0 
and this point will have to be plotted, will have to be shown as an outlier. Uh, so, this is the outlier. This is how we will present the result. Remember, we cannot ignore the outlier. We cannot simply uh, refrain from reporting the data, the outlier. We have to put it in the box and whisker plot, so that the, the reader knows that one data point was obtained like this. We do not know why this data point was there. For uh, the purpose of general calculation, we can go ahead with the rest of the data ignoring this, but this data must be presented in the paper because there is a possibility that this data was actually not an error, but due to some physical uh, process we got this data and this might provide information for further development of science. Therefore, this should not, not be masked, this should be presented. But for the rest of the calculation, we can go ahead with this. That means, by actually doing the box and whisker plot, we identify the data and thereby we drop this particular point and we can then continue with the rest of the data to calculate the mean, the, mean, the standard deviation, the, the, uh, the value and the, the error bar, all that can be calculated by taking the rest of the data. But this number has to be presented using a box and whisker plot, so that the reader identifies that as a obtained outlier. We do not yet know maybe why this outlier was there, but then that has to be presented, that cannot be masked, that cannot be hidden, you have to present it. So, uh, with that I will end uh, today's class. Maybe I will continue with that in the next, but the main point that I wanted to make today, there are two important points, take home messages is that there are certain ethics of science, details of which I will come to later. Whatever result you get, you have to present. You might know that certain results are erroneous, still you have to present and state that it is an outlier, I believe that it is erroneous, therefore I am calculating the rest, going ahead with the rest of the calculation with the other points, not with the outlier. And whenever you are doing a sampling, whenever you are doing a sampling, uh, the sample that you got that gives you a result and which may not tally with your expectation, your belief. And uh, then you cannot say that no, 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 this particular data set is bad and therefore I will take another data set which will confirm no. That is not the proper way of science. In doing science, you have to do the experiment without any, uh, definitely you have some expectation all right, but you have to do the experiment in such a way that your subjective beliefs do not interfere with your judgment your subjective beliefs do not interfere with your, with the outcome of the experiment. This is very important and uh, we will have to more de to deal with this, but I just wanted to mention before we end this class.